Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, this morning we're going to be looking at our gospel lesson, but also in light of the epistle lesson, which you had just heard the, the, the explanation that I gave to these uh, young children here about how God bestows his gifts upon all of us. And we use those in order to share that message of Jesus Christ through the world and also to do the things that we care for one another in the world. But yet, you know, as we do this and as we see this, we have to realize that in everything that we do and being able to believe in Jesus Christ and everything, there has to be faith there. And that within those faith, that light shines in our lives. That when we have faith in Jesus Christ, that, that there are so many things that seem to be impossible that can be done. There are miracles that can happen. And that's really the message that Jesus brings to us in our gospel lesson, is what those miracles mean to us in our lives and what it, what it means to us as Christians to be able to proclaim that message. First of all, we have to realize that we live in a very cynical world out there. We live in a world out there that many times doesn't recognize miracles. And, but if we are people of faith, if we are God's people, the reality of it is, is that we have to believe in miracles. We have to see the miracles that happen. In fact, as we look at our lives, there was uh, Albert Einstein himself talked about miracles, believe it or not. And what he said is, is that there's two ways for us to live our lives. Number one, we can either live our lives as if there are no such thing as miracles out there. Or we can live our lives in a way in which we see that everything is a miracle. And that's really the way we as Christians look at our lives is to see that in every aspect of our lives, God is performing and doing miracles in our lives. You see, for you to even be able to see a miracle in and of itself, what you have to do is you have to realize and you have to have faith in Jesus Christ. You have to have faith in him in order for you to even think that there, even to be able to see a miracle in and of itself. If not, you think there are just the things that happen are just simply happenstance that happens in the world. They're simply things that, that are by the God of science or, or that type of thing. Not realizing that in everything that happens and in everything that's out there, God is the one who is working the miracles in our lives in order to sustain us and even keeping us here in this world, in this universe. You know, many people kind of try to defer to the God of science. And when we look at the, or maybe I should say the creation of science, because when we look at there, a lot of people look at science and try to, to, uh, to, to make it the one that's there. And when you do that, you only find yourself in a, in, in a world of despair. Because the thing about it is, is why science can answer some things, it doesn't answer everything. Sure, for a doctor that doesn't see the miracle of God when he goes in and does an operation, but yet tries to give himself credit when a tough patient comes through. Sure, he's celebrating the accolades of his achievement in those times, but how about that simple case where the person should have pulled through for whatever, for you know, all intents and purposes, where nothing should have gone wrong, but yet the person dies on the table. Yet when he looks into his own skills in that, what he finds is he finds no answers. There should have been nothing that went wrong. Not realizing that in all of these things that it's God at work. It's God who is the one that instills in us those, those gifts that through the Holy Spirit, through our faith, and even upon those who don't have faith, he gives them the abilities and the powers to be able to do things do things which are miraculous. And by the way, the reason that those miracles happen aren't because of the doctor, it's because of those who go into that surgery and they have faith in their Lord. They have, they have faith and they have trust. Because that's really what faith is about, is trusting in God. And that's really what miracles are about, are trusting in the Lord. Because it's in those that we see God at work. You see, the thing about it is, is that when you rely on science and the science of evolution and how all of this became here, you still have to look at it as being a miracle. 
How many of us have not watched a thunderstorm? In an average day, a thunderstorm might put out how many? What, uh, you know, several strikes of lightning. If you look on the weather thing, when a thunderstorm moves across, I'll show you the little figures. One thunderstorm can put out more than 5,000 bolts in and of itself. Do you know that in an average day, that there are over 400,000 lightning strikes somewhere on this world? The question of it is, is how many times have you seen life ooze out of a puddle because of those? We haven't. Even though evolution says that what happens is, is there's this primordial ooze that's there and a lightning bolt strikes it and life is created. How many times have we seen that happen? Even in that case, it has to be a miracle because of all the days in all of our lives alone here, how many lightning strikes strike the ground? If you look at Carl Sagan and he tells you how many planets that we know of throughout the universe, the ones that we know about, in fact, we know that there are over eight quintillion, I believe, planets that can sustain life in and of itself. But yet we look out there and we realize that out of those, on none of those planets, do we see life. But yet here in this globe and in this place, we see life abundant. We see God who has created life each and every day. Through the birth of new children. You see, we as in science, we're still looking for water. Not life. So in other words, that must be a miracle that we're even here and that we can even survive out of all of those many planets this one little planet earth and each of us are here you see when you put your trust in science in that way it can it can describe a whole things but what it does is it describes the miraculous work of a, of a creator of God himself and that's what we have to look at is the fact that, that in every day of our life, we have to open ourselves to the miracles that God creates and does here in this world. Everything is a miracle. When we see it, when we see a young child born, when we see a child grow, when we see the things. But the thing about it is, though, is you have to look with faith because there are a lot of miracles that, that outside of faith that you don't see. One of the greatest miracles that we see as the church is when some a child or an adult comes before this font and a little bit of water is, is, is applied to him. There are a lot of miracles that happen there. First of all, that child is reborn and made anew. That old sinful self that is darkness within the person that creates ignorance that's there is washed away, is taken away. The Holy Spirit enters that child at that point, and he becomes a child of God. He becomes people who have faith in Jesus Christ, and, and the Holy Spirit starts to do that work in, in building faith in that child. Second of all, he becomes a new creation, where before he was a sinful creation that was only on a path of destruction, that was living in darkness and in ignorance, now is a child that lives in light. A child that can stand up here and sing a song, this little light of mine, I'm, I'm going to let it shine. And the light that they're talking about is the light of Jesus Christ. That's what's going to shine out into the world. And it's that light that can do unimaginable things. It can do things beyond our imagination. You see, what we have to realize is that the miracle is taking the sum of all things and making more than the sum. We know that in mathematics that 2 plus 2 equals 4. But in the world of God, in the world of miracles, 2 plus 2 equals 1,000. And see, that's what the power of miracles does. And that's the power of faith. But it's only by faith that we can even see miracles and we can even believe in those miracles. We're talking about that light that shines in the world. Probably one of the greatest inventions that gives us the biggest comfort in our life today is that of the illumination of the light bulb. In fact, the inventor, Thomas Edison, who made the light bulb, was asked one time, he says, why do you even venture to, to create these things? And he says, the reason that I create these things is because I want 
He says, the only way that I can do this is by perfecting that which I think will help people. And that's why he invented. But see, that's the work of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? Perfecting those things which help. And that's why God has put us here together is to help one another and help those people in the world see the light. To come out of that darkness because darkness is, is, is the only thing that's in darkness is ignorance and people without hope. It's only once we're in the light of creation, it's only when we're in the light of Christ that we can truly see the miracles that happen. We see that miracle that happens at baptism. But the true miracle is the fact that that child of baptism has been joined with Christ. And if you've been joined with Christ, then you've been joined with him in his death. And if you've been joined with him in his death, how much more, as Paul says, are we going to be joined with him in his resurrection? You see, that's the true miracle that happens. This is that we become a new creation, one that has been new and made alive. Life has been brought to us. The lightning bolt has struck. That's what we get when we become a child of God. Is, and that's the miracle, is that we now have everlasting life. We now have life with Christ. We become his child. And because of that, we have a reason to celebrate and have joy. And we now have hope in our lives. Even as we face the cynicism of this world. You know, there is cynics out there into the world today. You know, the thing about it is, because there are miracles all around, how appropriate it is that we talk about this on the first miracle that we see Jesus do. And it's here, it's, it wasn't, the miracle wasn't there in order to show God, Jesus' greatness, but it was there to show that in God, in His Heavenly Father, that we have a reason to trust. Because he's the one that is the master of the universe. He's the one that's in control. And that we can trust his love. You see, it was Jesus himself that had to do the first trusting. He had to trust his heavenly father that when he was put to death on the cross, that his heavenly father would raise him from the dead. And that's exactly what happened. And it's that same trust that Jesus instills in us through the Holy Spirit, through those gifts of the Spirit. He instills those things into us. And so we can trust in Him. We can trust in our Heavenly Father. We can trust that God will do that. But like I said, we face a world of cynicism out there. We have people who are out there that don't see the miracles. Simple miracles, like the birth of a child that God creates and he continues to do his work of creation even to today. But yet those other miracles, miracles such as the alcoholic that has come to Christianity. There was a, there was a man that was a, an alcoholic for most of his life. And then one day, you know, someone came to him and proclaimed the word of God to him. And in that, he started to learn and he became a Christian. And it was that day that, those, that, that he set aside that alcohol. But yet the cynicism of the world came to him and this guy comes to him and says, why are you believing in all this stuff? Why do you believe in this wedding at Cana and Jesus turning water into wine? What good has it ever done you? It's, not, it's just a bunch of poppycock. And he looked at him and he says, no, it's not. He says, he says, he says, and the other guy says to him, he says, well, how can you believe that somebody can turn water into wine? He says, because I have seen Jesus turn whiskey into furniture. What he meant by that was, was that he had a life that was one in which he couldn't hold a nickel. It was one that every cent that he had was put into that bottle of whiskey. And because of that, he didn't have the nice comforts of this world. In fact, he lived in an old thing, and, 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 the, and the, the, the furniture he had was picked out of a garbage. But when he put his trust in God, and God was able to work a miracle of, of, of healing in him, 
and he found Christ Jesus, what he was able to do was his life was turned around. The miracle was turned around to where now he was living a life that was pleasing to God and able to sustain and not only help himself, but to be able to help those around him. But yet we still live in a world for cynics. And there are still those cynics out there. Which reminds me of a story about a guy. It was a, a magician that worked on a cruise ship. And when he went out on this cruise ship and they would go down into the Caribbean, he, he was fortunate. The good thing about, about being on a cruise ship and being a magician is, is that you don't have to have any new tricks. You can use the same ones over and over again because you have a new audience every Sunday. It would be like me being able to give the same sermon every Sunday because everybody was different. It would, and so, he was out there and he was doing his tricks. However, the captain of the ship owned a parrot. And that parrot was very proficient in being able to repeat things that he had seen and had, and had said. And so like parrots do, he was up there and he was doing his magic tricks. And the first one was the card trick. And of course, he had somebody come up out of the audience. They came out and they pulled the card out. And guess what? He guessed that it was the ace of spades. Of course, then the parrot said is the secret. So where's your deck with all the aces? And then, the, then he just looked at the parrot and he had it with a little bit of disdain. And then, of course, the same thing, he would come up and he would then do his next trick. And, of course, it was the one where he tried to make the girl disappear. And so in the middle of the trick, he said, don't forget to go through the trap door. All the, all, the, all the magician could do is shake his head. Well, on one of the trips that they were going out, this had happened for, for, for a long period of time. On one of the ships they were going out, they managed to hit a storm. And in the storm, the ship sank. And so here was the magician. He was out there, and, he, and as, he was, as the ship sank, he found a log that he could climb on top of. And so there he was on top of the log. And wouldn't you know it, the parrot found the same log. And so the parrot goes out, and as he's sitting on the log, he just looks at him with anger and all that, and the parrot looks back at him and doesn't say a word. An entire day passes, nothing was said. Another day passes, nothing was said. A third day passes, and nothing was said. But yet on the fourth day, the parrot was looking there with anticipation, and he said, So where's the ship? You see, that's the thing about it is, is he looks at it with cynicism, as if it was just simply a trick. And sometimes that's the way that we look at our faith and the things that happen in this world as if they're just simply tricks and things like that. But for those cynics that are out there, that's where we need to be that light of Christ and proclaim the word of God. Because when we proclaim that word of God to the world, that they will no longer see that it's just simply a trick that needs to be played. But this stuff is real, that the light of the world enlightens and it brings light upon that which is there. And that the reality of it is, is that miracles do happen and they happen every day. Jesus Christ didn't stop just simply doing the miracles that were there. But we see it in every aspect of our lives. Every time we turn around, that every day, just as Albert Einstein said, that we need to look for the miracles. And the way that we look for those is in our faith. We see that in the times in which we see Jesus working in the healing that he does. We see it in the way in which he protects his people. We see it in the birth of a young child. We see it in their growth to adulthood. We see it when children sing about this little light of mine. We see it when alcoholics are turned away and come to Christ. We see it when those who are lost are, are found. We see it in all aspects of our lives. All we've got to do is open up to it. And all we have to do is look into our lives with faith and realize that God works miracles in our lives each and every day. That he protects us from this world. And that the greatest miracle of all that he's worked with us is he's taken that sin that tries to hide us in the darkness and tries to keep us in ignorance. That he takes that away. We don't see anything. I guarantee you when you go up to the baptismal font and when you go up to the Lord's Supper and that, well, you don't look any different. But the one thing that is different is this, is that heart. Because it's in that heart that God has taken that sin, He has wiped it away, He has made it no more, and He has made you children of God. 
That's the true miracle in that we can only see in faith. And so what my prayer for you is, and what I want you to take away from here today is, is to remember that you are children of God. You have been wiped clean and a great miracle has happened in your life. And so you need to take those gifts that God has given you and work together as God's people to proclaim that message of faith, but most of all to live that life just letting people see that light of Christ in you. Because that, that is the miracle that can happen. That is the miracle that you can see. That's what life is about in Christ. And so what I'd say for you today is this. Look for those miracles. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds centered and focused on Christ Jesus our Lord. The one who redeems us. Who makes us his. Who does the miracles every day. Amen.